Good enough in anything is where you feel that you've given your best and you've said everything you have to say, and I don't feel there. I think people that are compelled to achieve never really quite feel that they have achieved. When you love what you do, it's fun, it's not work. Find something you love. I, I want to keep working until the day I drop dead. So if you're excited in life, you're gonna be better at what you're creating. Creativity comes naturally to you, but it might come to you one month and not necessarily come to you a great idea for a few more months. Hello, artists. I have something for you. God, I hope this is interesting to somebody. I don't know. Art support. The first day of the job, the woman I was working for, who's a wonderful woman called Kathy Hardwick, who tells me now she hired me because she thought I had nice hands. Uh, nice <laughs> not because I had any talent, <laughs> even though I could draw, so I had a nice portfolio of sketches. She said, you know, sketch circle skirts. And I thought, oh, how do those go together? So I got on the subway, went up to Bloomingdale's, it flipped the skirts open, and look where the seams went. Uh, you know, once you figure it out, it's, it's quite architectural and everything has to have a seam if you want to make a curve and you learn quickly. And, and we had a sample room, so I worked with the seamstresses and the drapers in the sample room and I learned on the job. But uh, I didn't know how to make a circle skirt when I started in fashion. I was just determined to succeed in fashion. So you become quite aware of this is selling, that's selling, that's this much per square, you know, for, for fabrics, you're worried about the price, you're thinking about that, you're merchandising your collection as you're building it. So it was very, very useful because at that time in New York, to be a fashion designer, you had to have both a business head and a design sensibility. To succeed generally, is, is it talent or hard work? Um, it's a combination of both, but I would say it's slanted towards hard work. Uh, slanted towards obsession. There are many designers who have much greater talent as a designer than I do, but they may not have my drive, they may not work as hard, they may not have the focus, the desire. I mean, you have to have a talent, because in the end, you can have all those things, and if the pair of pants you make don't make someone's butt look good, they're not going to buy them. Yeah, so sure. you have to have the talent to be able to make something that people want. But then you also have to have the drive and the desire. First of all, I'm only curious on demand, meaning that I'm not necessarily naturally curious. If I decide I want to do something, then I become an expert at it. And I just go into it, and I want to learn every little thing about it. But I don't just sort of go around necessarily looking at everything. Oh, I think a lot of people. I think if you're determined and you decide you're going to do something, you kind of fake it a little bit and you jump right in and you do it. If you're the kind of person who, you know, who, who chases after things they want and is determined, and I was. I think we can do better in all of the things that we do and things are not, you know, they're never quite good enough for me and we're never quite there. Good enough in anything is where you feel that you've given your best and you've said everything you have to say and I don't feel there that I'm at that point yet. I think people that, that are compelled to achieve never really quite feel that they have achieved and it drives you to keep kind of jumping through hoops. Okay. I think the moment you get to a place where you think, oh, I'm a fashion legend or I'm a legend or I'm a I legend at whatever I do, yeah. Yeah. then that's when you're no longer competitive and you're no longer thinking and you're no longer moving and that's when you, you essentially, you know, dead as... Just like I knew I had to make a movie. Just like I knew I, you know, I, I, I uh, am compelled to do certain things. And I was terrified and I didn't really know quite what to expect, but I knew it was the place for me to go and that I had to leave. We were all fired, 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 <laughs> fired. I was still there. Fired, fired, fired. Um, so you I just kept your head down? Uh, well, no, I kept my head up uh, and tried to take charge, which is my character and personality. Of course. Yes. It, you always writing or thinking about what your I'm next project thinking, is going to be? Yeah, but that's downtime. You know, I like to work. I like to think when you love what you do, it's fun. It's not work. Everything you do at that moment in time is better because you're so creatively excited. So if you're excited in life, you're going to be better at what you're creating. My only advice to everyone is don't retire. Find something you love. I, I want to keep working until the day I drop dead. I think anyone who has a career uh, not just a job, but something that you love, that you're passionate about, that you have put so much of yourself 
into that when that disappears, you maybe don't know who you are. I didn't. It was, well, who am I? What is my identity? I had had such a great voice in contemporary culture. And if you're someone who likes to express themselves, that is very powerful and valuable. And I felt like I had no voice. In our business, that's all you have. You know, marketing reports and selling reports and all this stuff can tell you what's in the store now and what's selling. It doesn't tell you what's there tomorrow. Your intuition tells you that. So anyone who's successful in the fashion industry uses their intuitions. The more you do go with your gut, with your intuition, the more you're really giving a gift to people out there, something original and something They're both industries really too, where things look glossy and fabulous on the exterior. Yes. The amount of work and energy that goes into both industries on the back, the public doesn't see. So I doubt myself constantly. And in fashion, you have to doubt yourself up until the very last minute. Even if you've finished a collection and it's the night before you're gonna show it, and you realize, oh God, that's so wrong. You have to throw it out. You have to get rid of it. You have to destroy it. It doesn't matter how you fix it, what you change, you have to change it. So you're constantly doubting yourself. Uh, you know, you constantly have to question. However, when you do settle on something that just feels right, uh, you don't need to doubt yourself anymore. It's when you get to the point where you're no longer doubting that you know, okay, that's, that's the answer. The thing about fashion that people don't realize, it is incredibly repetitive. I can tell you what I'm doing on March 21st, 2013, and I'm not kidding. I have a calendar for 2013, because every year the shows are on these dates, which means that every year, you know, your collection has to arrive on those dates, which means that every year your fabrics have to arrive on that date, and to do that they have to be ordered in this date, and to have your sketches in on that date so that you can have this fitting, that fitting, and that fitting so the clothes can be ready on this date. Now, I can carry 20 different projects in my brain, but when I'm focusing on one, you can say, okay, Tom, let's talk about this, and I focus on that. I can't talk about anything else, I can't think about anything else, I'm focusing on that. Two seconds later, you can say, okay, let's focus on this one, and I can focus on that one. So all the time in my head, I'm carrying these things around, and I am kind of working on them, making resolutions, thinking about things, but I can't actually physically do anything but that one thing at a time, because I'm incredibly, Focus. Do Scheduling. I am highly, highly scheduled. Rigid? You like you have? Is it yeah, to the minute? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it is. It, it is. I, I think the industry is incredibly repetitive, and every year on a certain day, you do a certain thing, and you have to build your schedule that way. You what is the most challenging part of the creative process? Creating on demand. Because if you're a creative person, Creativity comes naturally to you, but it might come to you one month and not necessarily come to you a great idea for a few more months. And that never changes. It is relentless. You don't even get to finish one collection before you have to start the next one because they now overlap so that there's a flow of merchandise into the store so the customers can shop every two months and go in and find something new. So being creative on demand. I love Los Angeles as a city. Now, one of the things I love about Los Angeles are all the scenes of films that were made and took place in Los Angeles that actually existed but didn't really exist. Pick any old film from the 1940s, the characters, the, the clothes, the dialogue. Those things actually happened. They didn't happen in real life. But those people said those things, they walked through those sets, they spoke those words, and so in a certain way they're real. There's a parallel universe for me of image and of uh, fantasy uh, that isn't so much fantasy because it's forever sealed in films and in things that have entertained us for years. And this parallel universe has probably influenced me perhaps even more than the real world.